<laughs> I've done this video four times and every time the audio is fecked up. So let's hope this time it worked. Let's hope this time I'm going to get it all in, in, into one video about the RX 5600 XT. Most of the information is going to be RX 5600 XT, but I thought I'd talk a little bit about the 5500 as well in this video, and talk, the 5500 XT, and talk about it in the future, in, in the, in the, at the start, so you can lead into the 5600. So if you want to hear that information, it'll probably be later on in the video. Um, also, uh, it's information that I've got myself, and let's see if I'm right, because it's going to be coming out soon, like soonish, like next three months or so. So let's uh, see if I'm right, let's see what story is going to, going to be going on, and all that kind of jazz. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to hit that like button and all that jazz, and yeah, merch, 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 which really helps out the channel. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, the Oryx, uh, the Oryx 50, so first of all, we're going to go into this, right? Uh, this is from Video Cards. Video Cards is a very good leaker, right? And I tend to believe what they're saying. So uh, here we go, more proof that there's an RX 5600 coming. Uh, you know, the entries reveal that the 5600 and non XT models, uh, but also uh, 5500, the custom variants of all that kind of stuff. According to the product code net, code net scheme, the RX 5600 also, uh, would also be a six gigabyte model, same as the RX 5600 XT. This is very important, and I'll come back to this when I'm talking about the 5600 XT. Meantime, the same data confirms that the RX 5500 will also be available with four and eight gigabyte me memory uh, just as the XT variant. Azrock is preparing a challenger, blah, 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 blah. Right, so current rumors are that these don't exist. So I don't know why these are here, but that these don't exist as DIY options. The current DIY options are only going to be 5500 XTs. They're not going to have 24 compute units. They're going to have 22 compute units. So the full die is still going off to Apple or whatever. Excuse me. Uh, that these ones are going to be basically the only ones you're going to get and these ones are going to be just put in like custom Dells and all that kind of stuff. So these are going to be SIs. Don't know whether that's true. Don't know if there's any way to that. Um, all we've seen is leaks of like 5500 boxes, 5500 XT boxes. So RX 5600 and 5600 XTs was I was wondering where these cards were right for the longest time heard some information about them didn't know whether it was true all starting to drive now all starting to work really well together so I'm going to bring all that to you at the end of this video but it's it's kind of cool um, so my concern with the 5500 XT we're just going to go back there's another one uh, on video cards they man these guys are good uh, you know it, it, you can see custom models um, I'm dying to know what kind of plug these are using that looks like an 8 pin to me um, but I can't really tell is an 8 pin? I can't tell. It looks like an 8 pin, doesn't it? Yeah, so an 8 pin power connector uh, on these cards means they're going to be overclocked to balls. And um, yeah, RX 5500 and 5500 XT launch uh, next week. So it's the 9th today. Uh, these are going to launch on the 12th, is, is what the rumor is. So the 5500 5500 XT are going to launch on the 12th. Um, you're going to get, well, the 5500 is already launched, but the 5500 XT is going to launch. Uh, will feature 1408 stream processors, as I said. This is the current rumor as well. They're going to uh, not going to have the 1500 and whatever so uh, this is kind of surprising to me uh, if you look at current benchmarks where the 5500 XT performs it performs more like a 1650 Super or an RX uh, 580 than a 590 so you'd imagine that the RX 5500 XT is going to be the one that performs like a 590 so this is going to be a card that performs like a 590 the overclocked variant of the 5500 um, I think that's a mistake AMD you need to launch the full die for crying out loud Jesus Christ get it out there because my concern is here is the RX 5590 and what where are you upgrade here you're getting a, like this is a $170 graphics card $170 graphics card come which already beats this in performance you know for $170 so you got $170 and $170 like wh wh why do AMD need to launch anything keep pump keep making 12 nanometer Polaris because genuinely that's what it is like just keep keep the but it's more power who cares when you run the graphics card right who cares this is a this is a it's Polaris 30. It performs like a like a 1650 Super or slightly better, and it's the same price. AMD don't need to launch anything here. For me, that's the way I think, right? Um, so it's kind of disappointing that the 5500 XT is probably going to be more like this card, the RX 590, than anything else, and that's kind of that's kind of upsetting to me. But um, you know, what's more upsetting is when you look at the actual raw specs of the 5500, um, and if I you know, just see if I can get a, a 5500. So here's the 1650 Super, very cut down die, very, very cut down card, um, but it, it's cut down off the 1660 uh, die. So it's a Turing 284 millimeter squared, 
um, TU116. So yeah, that's fine. But when you look at the 5500, the 5500 is 158 millimeter squared, which is tiny, really, really small. Um, and you can see uh, it's got, you know, six billion transistors. Woo, lovely. Uh, 158 millimeter squared. Navi 14. It's got a 104. It's got 1408 shaders, which is kind of concerning that it's only as fast as a 1650 super while having 1400 shaders compared to the 1200 shaders of the 16 the 1650 super, which tells you that Navi is already memory limited. Remember that six gigabytes I told you before. Six gigabytes, very important. Um, so if we go back and we look for like an RX uh, 460, where is an RX 460? Or an RX, uh, an RX 460, or an RX 560. Uh, RX 560. Let's have a look at the die size of that. It's 120. It's it's 123 millimeter squared. Kind of in the same ballpark, isn't it? There for how really low end cards are cut down to be really really long. And in fairness, they've doubled the transistors, but like you know. Have they doubled the performance? I don't know, but you can see that this is kind of the ballpark you're going to be living in for li really like these are 150 to 180 dollars. What was the MSRP? The launch price on a on an RX uh, an RX 560 was 99 US dollars, 99 US dollars for 128 millimeter squared, and um, what was the what was the memory bus? Uh, the bus was 128, so 128 bit bus, right? 123 millimeter squared for 99 US dollars. That's what we used to get until Nvidia decided to jack up all the prices and AMD decided to play the game too. Remember this, people. Remember this. Doesn't matter that it's not a bad buy in 2019 because everything's more expensive and everything's going slightly faster, but it, it is kind of re reminding you of, of how expensive shit has gotten, right? And then you can buy an RX 590, as I said, for 169 quid. Kind of something to think about there, isn't there? You know, when you're talking about a 60 and fit, like if you go in here, like Tech Power Up's not a great resource for, for judging how fast cards are. They've got an overall performance using 1080p and all that kind of stuff. But if you look at a, a, a you know, a 16, uh, a 1650 Super, there it is, 5% slower than, a, than an R590 for the same price. Which one are you going to buy? Which one are you going to buy? It does tell you that a 1650 Super is nearly as fast as Fury, which is kind of impressive in nowadays statistics, isn't it? It's kind of this kind. It's kind of a funny one that it's about. The, it's a draw with a Fury. Uh, like I don't think that's true. I think you could probably make a Fury run a little bit faster. As I said, relative performance, relative performance. Depending on what games you're going to play, all that kind of stuff. Relative performance, performance summary. I would imagine they they have a bit benchmarking suite that they run a few games through, and they just kind of average out the scores. But there you go. Right. It's just the only. It's the the only website that you can aggregate all the scores to kind of get a rough number of where these things perform. I don't recommend using this to, to, to make your purchasing decision, however. Um, but yeah, 1650 Super is, in my opinion, the first NVIDIA card that they've launched in a long while that actually offered value, even though what was the launch price on a 16, on a 15, a GTX uh, 1050? So the, the, uh, the GTX 1050 MSRP of 139 US dollars. The 1650 Super is the card that replaces this. 132 millimeter squared. As I said before, the 1650 Super is actually uh, a really, really cut down die. So the yields are probably very good on that, but it is a lot bigger than this card. This card, a 128 bit bus, very much. So if you want to know where a card launched, you should look at the memory bus. If you want to know where whether a card is mid range or not, you look at the memory bus. 120, because memory bus allows you to artificially decrease the performance of a die while uh you know still you know being able to segment all the other stuff because you don't have to change anything you, you, you don't even change the pcb you just have to remove memory chips off the pcb which is great for for an easy cheap way to segment what kind of performance you're going to be having which is good that's good that's great so what you're going to see with these orx uh 5500 xts and 5500s is they're going to have four chips one of them is going to have four one gigabyte chips the other one's going to have four two gigabyte chips that's how you do that. Each one of them has, is 32 bits that contribute to the to the um, memory bus. So 264s is 128. That's where you get your memory bu memory bus from. So how many lanes are going into in and out of the of the die? How quick you can transfer uh, you know information? But 228 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth on the 15 on the, on RX 5. 
RX 5500 and 5500 XT. Now that's important for what I'm going to talk about later on. Okay, that's just the reason why I amalgamate all this stuff together. The RX 5600 XT is going to launch. And the RX 5600 XT is going to launch, it, from my information, start of next year. So that's all I've got. First quarter next year. 50, 50, 50, and that's going to be AMD's mid-range card. It, it's going to be like, do you remember when the, the, the HD uh, 5870 launched and the 5850 launched? And AMD kind of wanted a card that would offer kind of cheaper, you know, around the same performance but for a lot cheaper price. Well, they cut that, that top end die down even further. They got a, a, a 5830, which was the way it was explained to me. So, that, so this is what it's going to be like. It's going to be a Navi 10 die cut down even further. Navi 12, 256-bit bus. However, they've taken off two of the chips to give you 190. Very much like Nvidia did with the with the 2060 uh, versus the 2070. Because if you remember, the 2060 and 2070 were the same die. Just the 2060 was a really really cut down version of the 2070, and you could see that because if I show you now, I go I go across back to the three. You can see here this is a 2060. Excuse me, and there are the two di two chips missing. So you got six chips, each one gig, each one gigabyte, contributing a 198 uh, uh, bit memory bus, which gives you a grand total of 300 and something, 338 uh, gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Um, you can see here that the 2060 here it is here, 192 shader units, um, you know, uh, 192 bit bus. And it's about 15% slower than a 2070, right? But the 2060 Super has, uh, you know, 276, uh, two, sorry, 2176 uh, shader units. But it's so much closer than 2070, even though it's got still got it's significant le le num significantly lower number of shaders. How did it catch up so much? Well, number one, yes, the shader units helped. But the other one that helped was the memory bandwidth. So increasing the memory bandwidth to 256 bits uh, on the Super, uh, you know, 256 bits gave you that 448 rather than that 338, which really, really increased your, your memory throughput, throughput, which meant that this card was no longer memory bottlenecked, which meant that it would catch up. And the video always done well with having constrained memory systems on their graphics cards anyway. They've always done really well with that. So the RX 5600 XT, the reason why it only use, has six gigabytes of RAM, and everybody was confused about that six gigabytes of RAM number, is because the only way that AMD could limit its performance and not make it too close to an RX uh, 570 was by dramatically reducing the memory bandwidth on that card and it did that by removing two chips, right? So that's what they did. They did exactly the same thing here. Remove two chips. So the 5600 XT will have six memory chips and the only way you could make it bigger or give it more memory would have 12 memory, 12 gigabytes per second, 12 gigabytes of memory and that would probably be too cost, it wouldn't be cost effective enough for AMD to sell that card like that. So therefore that's why the two models are only gonna have six gigabytes of RAM um, with a total uh, bus of probably like 300 and something gigabytes per second, which would mean that rather than it um, being, uh, you know, where is the RX4, uh, the RX 5700, 5700, Vega 56, Vega, no, here we go, it's here, 5700, right? So 5700, so rather than be a 5700, 200, like this thing might have 2004 shaders, whatever, 2003 shaders, whatever, right? Um, the same number of shaders as on an RX uh, 570. I can't remember the exact number, but the, the 5600 XT might have that same number of shaders. I think it will have the same number of shaders, same number of TMUs, same number of ROPs. Uh, you know, uh, com the compute units be maybe 32, I think. Is it 32 compute units? Hold on, calculator. Uh, 30, 32 times 64 equals, yeah, two, sorry, 2048. 2048 shaders. I think maybe that's what beyond the 56, uh, the, uh, the the RX 5600 XT. Uh, but it will have 200. Uh, it, but it will have the. It won't have the full 256 bit bus, which limits its performance, dragging it down more into this kind of region of the chart. So if you look at you know these cards here, that's where you're going to be performing with a with a 5600 XT 
rather than up here where the 5700 performs and just removing if this is the leak that i got just removing those shaders wasn't enough to bring it far enough away that you wouldn't be buying one of these and kind of overclocking the balls out of it flashing it whatever and getting it up to uh you know 5700 territory now i have a 5700 xt love it great card wonderful think it's too expensive all that kind of jazz but yeah we've been wondering for a while where amd's answer to the the 1660 and the 1660 ti is well if if all of this is true then i think that the 5600 xt is going to be a decent bit faster than a 1660 ti and nvidia are probably going to have to launch a 1660 ti super I, I, and wait for those rumors to be coming out very soon uh because i would genuinely can, can, like like this would be one of the things where amd would have a win if there's no 1660 ti super because this card it's going to be probably maybe 280 quid, which I think, once again, is too expensive. It's very much as I'm saying, the RX 5500 XT needs to be 130 quid, but it's not going to be 130 quid. It's going to be 180 quid. I know it's going to be 180 quid. Wait until you see launch and see if I'm right. 180 quid. This uh, card is going to be 280 quid, and I really want it to be fucking uh, 250 to 230 quid. And if it was 230 quid, I think we'd have a winner. Uh, the 5600 5, non-XT variant, I don't know where that's going to perform. What's well, it going to perform like probably like a 60? So probably one is going to perform like a 1660 Ti. The other one's going to beat the 1660 Ti. They're going to be close in performance. And that's kind of the rumor that I've heard, the little bit of rumblings from my sources, as I said. I always find it funny people say sources. I have a Discord. I have a Patreon. I have a... a uh, and, and very openly and easily to achieve email address that you can send me emails i have all, all i have uh, dms on twitter and this is where people most people's sources come from this is a dude telling you shit on the internet and you didn't and, and you hear it and you go maybe i can't really run with that because i don't have any way to back it up and then all of a sudden uh, a month later you hear it being reported on video cards and you go i heard about that a while ago why didn't the fuck did i run with that but like, that's that's where that's where that's the truth of where my sources come from i love that sources thing but yeah anyway yeah so um, i'm not a genius i'm not a wood a lot of this is inference from 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 looking at anybody could have inferred this and come up with this this scheme and told me about it and it, it's just it, it making there's only so many ways you can cut the cake there's only so many ways you can make a graphics card and there's only so many ways you can lim limit performance so the big one is that navi uh, 12 is just navi 10 cut down and um, that uh, it's gonna have 256 bit bus available but it's and it's going to use the same pcbs and all that stuff as the, the, the rx 5700 5700 xt but they're going to just take two shit two dies off it and because they took two dies off it's going to memory limit it which means that it's going to drop down in performance tiers down about 15 percent from the 5600 and 50, uh, 5700 5700 xt back down into kind of vega 56 level performance and i would ask you in the comments below let me know do you think that a vega 56 level performance is good enough for 280 quid in 2019 i'm not going to say whether it is or not um but basically that's the whole dump anyway like if you like oh it's also going to drop it to 170 watts that's the other one anyway like if you liked it dislike if you disliked it but if you dislike it, tell me why dislike it sam fix it if i don't know what i did wrong and in the comments let me know what you think about uh, 5600 xt and all that kind of stuff um uh yeah and don't forget to like comment share and subscribe all the chats i'll talk to you next one um yeah uh patreon and paypal if you want to help me out directly buying these cards to review them that's how i buy these cards i don't buy them my own money patreon and paypal is what allows me to purchase all of the hardware for the channel talk to you next one bye bye bye